I'm Megan. Thanks for joining me for a somatic neck exploration. And a couple of items you'll need today is you'll need a washcloth and some sort of ball. It can be a tennis ball or it can be a little bit smaller, no bigger than a tennis ball, no softballs. Um, and if we're, we're going to be doing one thing in a, called a Z-sit where some people are not comfortable on the ground, so you might want to have a chair handy when we do that posture at the end. Uh, but what will be interesting is we're working on the neck, but we're going to start from the feet for a number of reasons. When we find our feet, we can begin to stack, really the feet and the pelvis, we begin to stack the spine. We have something, we have a pedestal to put the spine on. You know, think of if, you're, if your base of your bird bath is crooked, then the bird bath itself is going to be crooked. And that's a little bit like the neck, but also because the neck is where all of the nerves start for your um, central nervous system. They start at the base of the spine, so everything's going to be coming through your neck. And so it's a little bit of a check for the nervous system to play with our toes and see what kind of movement we have. And in, in speaking in toes, the toes correlate in reflexology, or the, the uh, toe joints particularly, especially the big toes, with the neck. So we're going to check things at the bottom. The feet are like the, uh, the other analogy I say is the feet are like the root of the spine and the root of the neck in particular. And they're also mini brains for your nervous system because it's our feet that hit the ground first and have to send those messages up to the brain. So we'll start by finding a nice posture. So check that to see that you're not slumped, no head forward. Maybe just take a big breath in and then sigh, let your shoulders fall, and then check your pelvis. We don't want to be uh, tailbone down where our tail would be coming between our legs like a dog that just got in trouble. We also don't want to lift our butt up like a uh, chicken butt where we're shortening the back. So just a nice neutral pelvis and keeping the ears over the shoulders and the shoulders over the hips. Once you find that nice neutral spine, you're going to grab the ball. We'll start with the right foot and put it underneath the right foot so that you feel the majority of the ball, it'll be right on the ball mount of your foot, but also underneath the toes. And then you can even go down there if you want and wrap your toes, spread them around the ball. And then line your feet up so that your toes are even, your feet are about as wide as your hips, so we still have that nice posture. Keep your, watch that, so we don't want to look down at the ball, you want to look straight ahead. I'll turn sideways. So gaze straight ahead, and then just squeeze the ball with the toes and release and just squeezing for a few breaths and release. And notice one of the things you'll notice is, is there any pain? It's particularly in your toe joints. So you're just squeezing and releasing. And pay particular attention to the big toe. Can you feel that squeeze? And you'll feel the muscles in the sole of the foot tighten up as you're squeezing the ball. This is a little bit of an assessment for your feet too. See how your feet might be feeding your neck information. And then we're going to do just the opposite. So I was squeezing the ball and wrapping my toes around the ball like I was trying to pick it up. Now I'm going to lift the toes away from the ball and spread them out, get some air between the toes, and then again just release down. And my heels resting on the ground, trying to keep the less rest of the leg muscles soft and just lifting away. And now notice how the top of the foot will tighten a little bit and the sole of the foot will stretch. We're just getting acquainted with the feet. I'm looking down, but I want you to try to keep your chin parallel to the ground and keep the soft palate back a little bit. It's a nice neutral neck. And then relax that. Come off of the ball. Hopefully you've got your towel there, your washcloth, the dish towel works too. And I'm gonna purposely mess it up a little bit, otherwise it's really hard to pick up. So you may or may not be able to do this. You might notice how your toes feel right now too, just rest on them. But see if you can grab that towel as best you can, and if you don't pick it up, that's okay. Try to grab the towel with your toes, and it may not happen, but it's similar to what we just did with the ball. You're going to try to grab it with your toes, and if you can grab it, you can even lift it up <laughs> and take it back down and let it go. And then when you let it go, lift the toes up like we were doing when we were lifting the toes away from the ball and then relax the toes. We'll just do that two more times. So try to pick the, ball, pick the rag up or the dishcloth, whatever you've got. If it doesn't go all the way up, that's okay. But see if we can get it up and then drop it down, relax, lift the toes up, spread the sole of the foot and relax. Keep that neck in a neutral position. So crown of the head re reaching up. Last time, squeeze it 
And if you can't grab it, everybody's toes are shaped differently too. You're just trying to feel that sole of the foot tighten, feel that arch lift. If you want, you can lift it up, <laughs> take it back down, and then lift the toes up, stretch the sole of the foot, draw the top of the foot towards your shin, and then let it go. And then just stand on both feet for a moment and notice how your feet feel. So again, one of the things I look for when I do that is pain in my feet because if I'm having pain, I know I need to do this stuff more often, especially if you're wearing shoes all the time. Uh, we want to have that flexibility, mobility, the, the, feel, the felt sense in our feet, which is hard when we wear shoes because we kind of dumb down our feet whenever we wear shoes and keep them in the same position. So now we're going to take the ball underneath the left foot. Just check your posture first. So watch that you're not in that head forward position. Take the ponytail and the nose slightly back. Balls underneath the toes. If you want, you can even go down there and stretch them out a little bit. Line up your right toes with your left toes so you have a nice posture from your hips to your ankles as well. And then squeeze the ball and release. And that's it. Just squeezing it and releasing it. And just notice what you feel. Do you feel anything in your shin and your calf, your knee all the way up your thigh or into your hip? Keep the back of the neck in that natural curve and the front of the throat open, so not dropping, dropping the chin. Now we'll switch. Try your best to lift the toes away from the ball. You might press the ball mount of the foot in a little bit. So feel the sole of the foot stretch and the top tighten and just release the toes onto the ball. So this one we're lifting toes away. I'm just getting a sense. Think of that relationship of your feet, particularly your toe creases, all the way up to the neck. And feeling your feet. So if you have a lot of sore soreness with this, there's other things I do. I've got other videos where we do a uh, massage for the feet. We do ball work on the whole foot lifting the toes one more time and then relaxing the toes down and we're coming into uh, boot season here in Wisconsin so I know I'm wearing shoes a lot more than I usually do normally yoga teachers get to be barefoot uh, so I do more of this kind of foot stuff so now we're going to take that towel you can if you bunch it up a little bit it's a little bit of a cheat it's easier to grab with your feet so I'm going to put it down there See if I can curl my toes around it like I'm trying to pick it up. Even if I can't pick it up, that's okay. But I'm going to wrap it around. Sometimes I do this with a pencil too. A towel feels much better. You can lift it up <laughs> and then drop it down. And then once you get it down, draw the toes up towards your shin. Stretch the sole of the foot and then just relax them. We'll do that two more times. See if you can imagine trying to pick up that towel with your feet, with your toes, your toe creases. Squeeze it if you want, you can lift it, let the weight come into the other leg, and then take it back down, relax. And all the while, keeping that nice upper body posture, lift the toes, feel that nice stretch through the bottom of the foot, relax down again, last one. Try your best to wrap the toes around the towel, washcloth, whatever you got there. A sock, you can use a sock as long as it's not on your foot. <laughs> lift it up. And then take it back down, relax it, lift the toes up, especially that big toe. Big toe is a saddle joint, which just is a fancy way of saying it can go in circles and it's a little bit smarter than the rest of our toes. It takes up more space in our brain, it's that smart. And then let the toes come down and relax. All right, so we're gonna be shifting gears. We're gonna go down to a seated position. This one, you cannot use the ch uh, chair. We're gonna be sitting on the ground for this. And in the meantime, I'm gonna show you just a little picture of some of the muscles of the neck. So just as you're settling down, take a moment, just look up at the picture of some of the neck muscles. We don't need to know the names, but just be familiar to, somewhat familiar to where they are and what they do. The SEM muscles run from underneath your ear to the collarbone and the sternal area, sternocleidomastoid, and those are helpful in turning your head from side to side, as well as side bending your neck and bringing your head forward. So they're really important in movement of the neck. Um, the other muscles that help with some of that are the scalene muscles, and you'll see those are kind of right underneath. There's three on either side of the SCM. The uh, 
back side of your neck, the main ones we'll focus on today are the upper trapezius muscles. If you reach around and massage the back of your neck, that place where everybody loves to have their neck massaged, that is your upper trapezius muscles and they actually fill your whole back and then end right at the base of the skull. And also, if you have tightness in your shoulders, so we can't really work the neck without doing shoulders, that's because there's muscles like the levator scapula, which is one of your muscles of the rotator cuff, that come all the way up to the base of the neck from your, from your scapula, from your shoulder blades. So it's really intertwined neck pain and shoulder pain, or shoulder tightness can lead to neck pain, as well as looking at the feet, which we did. So now that you're in your seated position, I'm going to ask you to take your feet out in front of you, and you're gonna take the feet to the ground, and just come into a little rounded position. You can even let your head fall forward. Round your back. This is our magic trick for the neck. And just pause, breathing into the backside. Let yourself fall. And then you're gonna begin to very slowly lift your head up. And without forcing it, see how high you can lift your neck. And you're gonna find that special spot on the ceiling. Like how high can you lift? And try to remember how high can your gaze go on the ceiling? Again, without forcing it. So if you were to, with your mind's eye, just put a little dot on the ceiling, remember that place. And then slowly release the head back down. So I do this one for you because again, this is assessment. If we find that what's going on in the neck is not a mechanical problem, it's not um, some sort of tissue damage, and it's more of just a tightness of muscles, what we call sensory motor amnesia in, in uh, somatics, then we know that these exercises can really help a lot. So you're gonna take the hands behind you now, and we'll start with the right leg, and you're going to slide your right leg forward, and as you slide your right leg forward once it's extended, doesn't have to be fully extended if you're tied through your hamstrings, then you're going to reach the top of the foot away from your shin. So you're going to tighten the bottom of the foot and stretch the top and then squeeze the toes to, to, towards the sole of the foot, just like we were doing with that ball. And you're going to do that. Then you're going to slide it back in. And then you're going to lift up onto the heel. So draw the top of the foot towards the shin, stretch the sole of the foot, tighten the top, pull your toes back again, just like we were doing with the towel and the ball and then release all the way down. So we'll do a couple of those and then you can add the neck in as well. You slide the foot out, reach the top of the foot forward, squeeze the toes towards the sole of the foot, slide it back in, lift onto the heel, spread the toes and set it back down. We're doing just the right foot. And just, if you can, close your eyes and be mindful of what you feel, not just in your foot and your ankle, but all the way up the leg, sliding up, it might take a little bit to find this movement, although hopefully we've already woken up the toes. If you wanna add the head to this, take the chin down towards the chest as the leg slides forward just slightly. So there's a difference between chin tucking towards the chest versus letting my whole head fall forward. I like to think tuck the nose or tuck the chin, bring the nose down and then squeezing the sole of the foot. Slide it back as you slide it back and come onto the heel, draw the toes towards your shin and lift your head up just a little bit. This is extension and flexion of the neck. Slide it forward again, chin towards the chest, nose down, squeezing the sole of the foot, release that, come back onto the heel, pull the toes back, you can take your gaze up. Release back down, we'll do one more with that right foot, slide the leg out, you can bring chin towards the chest, Feel the ankle, the front of the ankle open up, squeeze the toes towards the sole of the foot. Slide the foot back onto the heel, pull the toes up, you can take your gaze up. And then release back down. All right, we'll do the same thing. Actually, let's pause for a moment. Just take your arms around your legs again. Just pause, you can even rock side to side. Give your wrists a little break. Notice what your right foot feels like, what your ankle, it's a little more awake and alert. And then we'll do the same thing with the left. So hands behind you, take the left foot, slide it out, reach the sole of the foot, squeeze the bottoms of the toes towards the sole of the foot, slide it back in, release it, slide it back in, onto the heel, lift up, pull the toes, spread them apart and pull them towards your shin bone, top of the foot towards the shin bone, release back down, slide it out, 
Stretch the top of the foot, open the ankle, squeeze the toes. You can relax it, slide it back in. Onto the heel, draw everything towards the shin, including the toenails, top of the foot. Relax it. If you want to add the head to this, look down as the leg goes out. Leg slides in, head goes back to neutral. Lift down to the heel, draw the top of the foot back, spread the toes. You can take your gaze up and release it down. Take your time exploring these. Go really slow so you're feeling, if you can, just close your eyes. Once you find the rhythm of the movement, close the eyes if you can. So you're more in that felt sense, just experiencing. No, no, there's not really an end goal here, right? There's a beginning and a middle and an end to the movement, and they all matter. Let's do one last one with the left foot. So sliding it out. Feel the sole of the foot tighten. So that's our <clears throat> plantar flexion. Release that. We can bring the chin down to come back. Press into the heel. There's our dorsiflexion, drawing the top of the foot towards the shin. You can lift your head up and relax it down. All right, now let's come back to where we started. Wrap your hands around your legs. Just take a moment. You can fall into your sit bones. Feel your feet on the ground. So ground through the sit bones and the feet. And then once again, begin to slowly lift your head up, just like we did in the beginning. See if you can remember where that spot was on the ceiling the first time around. And is it the same, or did you gain some mobility lifting your chin? Can you look a little bit higher up without force? If so, then yes, that's a pretty good indication that some, somewhere in your neck, your shoulders, you've got what we call that sensory motor amnesia. The muscles are just stuck. They're just not moving the way they need to. So that means hopefully you'll enjoy this practice. So now we're going to come down onto the ground, onto our backside. Always when working with the neck, in addition to addressing the feet, I like to address the pelvis because the pelvis is the center of our universe. So I'm going to work through this one a little bit faster. Hopefully you're not brand new to somatics, but I will talk you through. We're going to be doing the clock face with the pelvis, but first we're doing the arch and tilt. So as I take a breath in, you can take your hands to your belly. As I breathe in, my belly rises up, and as my belly rises up, I want to press the tailbone down into the ground and arch the low back. So there's going to be a little space between my low back and the floor. And then as I breathe out, I'm going to press out that space just lightly, feel the tailbone lift up. And I'm not going into a bridge pose. I'm not lifting all the way up. It's just think of your pelvis like a bowl. As you inhale, you're tilting the top rim of the pelvis forward and upward, so towards your feet. And then as you breathe out, you're tilting that top rim of the pelvis back and down. That's from the front side. I also imagine that if I had a drop of water on my navel center, I'm just feeling that water roll towards the pubis as I breathe in and then back towards the center of my belly. You can also feel this from the back side of your body. Notice your weight as it rolls into the tailbone at the top of the inhale. And then as you breathe out, feel the weight roll into the space in the low back and the low ribs. So as you're self sensing the movement of the pelvis, just see, is anything happening in your neck right now? Is your neck naturally going along for the ride? And if it is, that's a really good indication that you've got some of that freedom of movement. But if not, what we can start to do is as you're breathing, and pressing, breathing in and pressing the tailbone slightly down, lifting the low back, take your gaze towards your knees. So chin will tuck towards the chest. Not forcing it, but just a little bit. So you're lengthening the back of the neck as the low back arches. As you breathe out, you're gonna lengthen the low back and take your gaze up towards the sky or even overhead a little bit. So lifting the chin away from the chest, arching the neck. So this is the natural flow of the tail to tongue spinal movement in this pelvic tilt. So we want the neck to respond to the movement of the pelvis. So you might need to do that voluntarily first, purposely looking at the knees at the top of the inhale, looking overhead at the bottom of the exhale, then see if you can let go and if this movement just begins to happen more naturally. We'll do one or two more. 
And then we're gonna add on to this. Just pause for a moment. So from the pelvis again, you're gonna press your tailbone down, but now you're going to press your right hip down. So we're gonna go around a clock, like a clock face. Your 12 o'clock is your tailbone. Six o'clock, excuse me, three o'clock is your right hip. Your low back, low ribs is your six o'clock and your left hip is your nine o'clock. So we're gonna go tailbone down, right hip down, low back, low ribs down, left hip down. And going around in that circle, tailbone. So that's my arch that I was doing earlier. But now I'm gonna roll onto the right hip. Left hip will lift onto the back and then on to that left hip. Going really, really slow. And what I'll sometimes see is the legs are doing all the, all the work. They're doing this back and forth. Keep your feet on the ground underneath your knees. And see if you can just make this more of a pelvic movement. Not tightening the muscles in the legs, but letting the muscles in the legs relax. Whichever direction you're going, see if you can just switch and go the opposite direction. So finding these circles, tailbone will press down, low back arches, left hip presses down, right hip lifts, low back presses down, tailbone lifts, right hip presses down, left hip lifts. So now go to your head, notice your head and your neck, and see if you can start to very slowly copy that movement with the head. So as I spiral around through this clock face in my pelvis, I'm gonna imagine that my eyes are just kind of watching the movement or they're mimicking the movement, my head. And that's something that you can explore is you can initiate the movement in your head from your chin. You could initiate the movement in your head from your nose. You could initiate it from your eyes. There's not a right or wrong, and then you can switch and go the opposite direction. So we're circling the pelvis and the head. Sometimes you'll find that when you go to switch directions, I just felt that it was like a rubbing the belly and the patting, uh, patting the head moment for me. I really had to think about it. So can you gently, and you know, we're not doing bobbleheads here. We're gently rolling the head, or you can feel the head from the back. Think of massaging the base of the skull into the ground. Something I didn't mention, but I will, is if you like extra padding under your head, typically I recommend just doubling or tripling your mat so you could make a little pillow. What I don't would like you not to do is to be on a pillow to where your neck, your head is lifted. You want your neck in the neutral position. So more padding, all good, but not lifting up like we're sleeping on our pillow. So just finish those circles all the way around and then relax if you want you can hug your knees in or now is a good time to windshield wiper the legs and take your legs out long if that's comfortable and just pause for a moment notice where the weight is in your backside and your head and then we're going to go into the next movement so this next movement is really about flexion and what we're really doing is we're copying what happens naturally which is we a lot of times we sit in a rounded spine you're going to stay down on the ground but we sit in this rounded spine so we're going to create that rounding but we're going to contract the muscles in the front right now they're just being weak and smushed but we're going to use those muscles so we're going to contract deeper into this closed off space in the front body and then release it so this will be done in the movement of the pelvic tilting. It's called bracing. So now I'm gonna inhale into the arch of the pelvis, exhale and curl. But now as I curl, I'm also going to bring my chin towards my chest. I'm not lifting my head as much, just kind of keeping the crown of the head back and just feeling these chest muscles tighten. As So I'm lifting the base of the skull and the tail. If in any way this doesn't work for your neck, Please don't lift, or what you can do is just tuck slightly. You want to feel these muscles in the front of the throat. So you're lifting up on the exhalation, and then take a few breaths. Notice all the tightness through that front body, and then slowly take it down. 
You'll often see people do this with arms underneath the head. That is another option, although when I'm working with neck, I prefer not to use my arms because sometimes they'll overpower the neck muscles. But what you could do is press elbows into the ground, onto tailbone, arch your back, that's your inhale. And then as you exhale, if you want to use the arms, squeeze the arms towards the ears, lift the tailbone. So you're trying to shorten the space from the navel center of the pubis to the chin. You're tightening all those muscles perfectly. Take a few breaths there. And then slowly release it all down. So that option to do it with hands underneath you. What you'll want to watch though with the hands is if you hold tension in your shoulders that when you come down you're completely releasing the arms. So otherwise again arms here or what you can do is as you come up, so I'm going to take that inhalation arching, press the shoulder blades into the ground. As I exhale and curl, I could roll my arm bones in and tuck the chin towards the chest and lift the arms instead of supporting my head. Tighten everything up, so even the front of the throat. You're not, you're not letting your head fall forward, right, because gravity's not going to do that for you. You have to engage the muscles in the front of the neck, just like through the whole frontal plane, and then slowly, slowly, slowly. Release it down, release it completely. Maybe you need to take the head side to side. So it's going to feel like a little bit of work for the front body, but not strain or pain. Let's do one more of those. You may be choosing to take the hands behind the head for more support and just barely lifting up. Or you can do, I like the arm rolls personally. So I'm going to arch into my back. And as I press the back low ribs in and lift the tailbone, I'm also going to roll my arm bones in. Instead of tucking my chin, so I'm not trying to lift the forehead and my gaze towards my knees. I'm trying to keep my gaze a little bit more towards the sky. Keep those neck muscles active. <clears throat> as I roll my arms in, I'll also feel the tightening through the pectoral muscles. Pectoralis across the front. Think of your collarbone area. Take a few breaths there. And then slowly release down. And the scaly muscles actually connect to your first couple of uh, ribs up here. We use them as accessory muscles for breathing. So those are we're tightening down too. And then just relaxing. If you want to let the head roll side to side, you can do that. And then speaking of side to side, we're going to roll onto, let's go onto the right side of the body. You can take your legs in whatever position feels best. In fact, if you want a pillow between your knees, do that. I'm comfortable using my arm underneath my right ear as a pillow. However, if that does not work for you, you can take your arm out in front of you and put something underneath your head where you're just at a natural height. So not a pillow so high to where the left side of the neck is shorter than the right. So if I were to prop myself right now, <clears throat> pull in a blanket. It would be just enough to keep me in a neutral position. So if even if I doubled this up, which is sometimes what we do when we're sleeping, that's starting to get too high. I can feel the shortness through the left side of the neck. Otherwise you can use your arm. Your arm is usually about right. And then take a moment, just feel the left sides of the neck. So there's different ways that we quote unquote stretch. And what you typically see in a lot of yoga and exercise classes is what I call a passive stretch. This is not that. This is a stretch that we do. So muscles can either be active or released. So this is called eccentric, I can't say it to say, eccentric contraction. So you're going to feel your head and make sure your gaze is straight forward and begin to slowly lift up the left ear to the left shoulder. So it's a lateral bend for the neck. And what I want you to notice is the muscles in the side of the neck, the top side, are going to be short and active, but the bottom side is going to be long and active. So that's the difference. We're stretching that bottom side of the neck, but it's long and active. And you're going to go up as high as you can. And I'm not doing this to the breath because you're going to go down really, really slow. And now you're going to feel those upper neck muscles. And just let it completely relax. You might tuck your chin towards your chest or take your head back and forth when you come down so slowly lifting up as far as you can go keep the arms relaxed and 
slowly, slowly, slowly coming back down. So now we're really working with those, with that SEM muscle, but on both sides, it's just the top side, that left side is, is short and strong, and the bottom side is long and strong. Lifting up, and watch that you're not tucking one of the compensations as the head will come forward. You want to keep the crown of the head back, your gaze straight ahead. So if you can see your chest or your knees, you know you're looking too far down. Nose, nose is right straight in front of you, and you're lifting up ear to the shoulder. You can pause there. And slowly release, come all the way down. So that's how we learn to feel through the sides of the neck. Let's feel our shoulder a little bit and then our arm in this one. So send your shoulder, and just like we did with the pelvis and the neck, we made circles. You're going to start to make a circle. So you can bring your shoulder up towards your ear and then towards your backside. So slide your shoulder blade towards your spine. And you're going to go down towards your hip and then forward. So I'm going to start by making these circles through the shoulder joint all the way around. What I'm trying to avoid right now is moving my shoulder from my arm. So I'm going to keep my arm quiet on my left side. So just making the circles. See if you can make circles through your shoulder. Loosen it up a little bit. And then let's add that little bit of extra stretch. So now when you're lifting your head up, reach your hand towards your feet. So you're feeling activity through the top of the shoulder too. And then slowly release down. Let the shoulder relax and the neck. Reaching and lifting and releasing. Coming down. So this is a lateral bend, a side bend for the neck, and you're using those muscles that take our head into a lateral movement. Reaching and releasing. Do one last lift if you'd like, and if you're not using the arm, that's okay too. Watch that you're not coming forward with the head though. Keep that space in the front of the throat. And then release. Okay, the next one, you just want to bring the knees up just a little bit so the thighs are more parallel to the spine and the shins are parallel to the long edge of your mat. And then we'll do more of a rotation. But I want you to do the rotation from your head first. So I'm going to come off of my arm. My head's comfortable on the ground. You might have a pillow or that uh, blanket underneath you. Start to turn like you're going to look over to the left side of your mat and turn with your head first. And as your head begins to turn, just let the shoulder follow. And then slowly come all the way back. So just like we would normally do, our head typically leads us. So just the arm, the left arm is resting on the side of the body, and I'm going to let my head roll to the left and feel how the shoulder follows. Take your gaze to the left. And then come all the way back. So this is rotational movement. Going really slow and easy, head leads. And then let's say we want to start to put a little bit more into it. You can take your palms together out in front of you. And as your head starts to turn, let the left arm slide through the right arm. And maybe it just stops at, stops at the elbow. It might make it to the shoulder. Oh, see how far you can go, come back with the head. And we'll do that again. So you're leading from your head, turning with your neck to look over your left shoulder, but left, let the shoulder and the arm follow. And maybe the arm comes all the way across your chest. It might even come all the way out long. So you're in like a T shape. And come back head first. Let the shoulders and the arms follow. They're just sliding the one arm on the other, but let the head lead the way. Coming back out of it, look at your right hand first. You can slide the left arm down. The other thing you can do, and this does, it's big gains for your nervous system, is even though my head is turning to left, I'm going to 
switch my gaze and try to look out the corner of the right, the right side of my eyes. So I'm looking at my right shoulder, but my, I'm turning to my left. So the eyes are looking in the opposite direction of where you're moving. It's a little bit trickier, but you can try it. You can also do this with your eyes closed. These are all just different ways to approach it. So I'm going to start to turn my head, but I'm looking out the right side like I'm trying to see my right shoulder. Arms and shoulders follow. I can pause. That rotation feels nice. And then coming out, I'm going to turn my head towards my right shoulder, but I'm going to switch my gaze over to the left shoulder. Moving really, really slow. All right. And then pausing if you want. You can pause in a fetal curl. That's always nice. You can rock yourself. We'll be switching to the opposite side. So. I'm going to turn towards you, but you're going to be coming on to the left side. But take your time in between. Notice the differences on your two sides. You might even roll through your back side. See how that feels. And I'll meet you on your left side. Take your legs in whatever position feels best for you. Bring your blanket with if you wanted that blanket underneath your head. I'll bring mine over for this side just enough to keep your neck in a neutral position so we don't want that right right side of the neck shorter than the left or you can use i usually use my arm you can do that too and then take the crown of the head back and the base of the skull back a little bit so just watch that you're not looking down at your knees but straight ahead think of the muscles in the side of the neck and when you're ready very slowly begin to lift the weight of the head and even if you don't Feel it come off the ground, you just feel the muscles engage. That's fine. And then you can come back down. Otherwise, lift to your end point very, very slowly. So it's like you're bringing your right ear to your right shoulder. Slowly releasing it back down. Let it go. Lifting right ear to right shoulder. So again, notice the muscles in the side of the right side of the neck are short and strong the bottom side are long and strong so we're stretching technically that bottom side is getting long we'd say it's stretching but it's actively stretching let it go and lifting up so the coming down as slow as you can i notice on this side my head tends to drift forward more so i'm going to really make a mental effort to keep the base of the skull in line with the shoulder blades even if I don't lift as high. This is my, my unhappy side. So just watch that compensation of bringing the chin forward. And then relaxing, let it all go. If we wanna add the arm to this, as you're doing the head, well actually let's do our shoulder circles first. Feel your right shoulder and squeeze it up towards your ear and then bring the shoulder back so it's like your shoulder blade sliding towards your spine and then shoulder sliding down towards your hip or think of drawing your armpit towards your hip then shoulder forward and back up again so making those circles from the shoulder you're gaining a little independent movement in the shoulder blade area and the collarbone and notice what that feels like for the side of your neck arm staying relaxed so i'm not moving my shoulder from my arm it's not this it's not swimming strokes it's moving my shoulder from my shoulder you can go both directions if you got that and now let's add the arm in so now as we're lifting the head up keeping our gaze forward, reach the hand towards your feet or think of drawing the top of the shoulder and your armpit towards your right hip. Squeeze that shoulder towards the right hip. Slowly come back down and release. And you can hold at the top for as long as you want. You should still be breathing smoothly. Your face is soft. And let it go. Let it all go. Reaching up. And 
And relaxing back down. Last one. Reach the hand, lift the head. Think of drawing your right armpit towards your hip so that right side's contracted, not just in the neck, but the side body, left side is long. And then slowly release. Let it come down. Pause, and we're gonna go into the rotation. So with the rotation, if you're on your arm, it usually doesn't work just because your head falls off the arm. So either put something underneath your head, like a, a blanket, or double up your mat, or if you can just get your head down, that's fine too. Right arm's relaxed. Feel your neck. Think of the spiral movement of your neck. You're going to begin to slowly turn your chin like you're going to look out towards the right shoulder. Just as far as you can go. So again, this is my problematic side, so I can tell right away I do not have the same mobility. And coming back. Letting your head lead the way your gaze your chin wherever you're going from you can lead from your nose and letting the shoulder follow so it's that this is that uh, movement we make all the time you know reaching around the back seat of a car anytime we reach behind us but i'm not initiating with my arm i'm initiating that movement with my head Coming back. And then if we want to add just a little bit more, you can take the palms together. As you begin to turn your head, let your right arm slide up the left arm. It might stop at the elbow. Or it might stop at the shoulder. And coming back, I did forget to mention, if your legs are way down here, see if you can bring your knees up more to a 90 degree angle. Not a big deal, but you'll get a little more twist through your waist and then i'm sliding but i'm i'm initiating the movement with my eyes and my gaze so for me on this side because i'm tighter i can't extend the right arm out because if i do my right shoulder blade is actually lifting off the ground so the left side when i get to here the left shoulder blade was on the ground so i extend but with the right side, the shoulder blade's somewhere up here. So if I extend, I'm actually straining the front of the shoulder. So I keep the elbow bent. So you might notice those things. If when you're rotating, you can't get the shoulder blade down, just stop here, elbow bent. So you're not doing this straining thing. This is not straining. This is straining. So you gotta treat the two sides of your body differently sometimes. And what I'll typically do is if I know that one side is tighter, I'll work a little bit longer on that side. So now think about maybe taking your gaze towards the right, or I'm sorry, taking your, your turning your chin towards the right, but taking your eyes towards the left. Just a little bit more play into this. And then turning the head back first. To remember to initiate from the head and then let the shoulders follow in the hands. Head initiates the turn. And the weight of the head is, is heavy. I'm not lifting my head at any point. I'm letting my head be supported by the ground. Really important. Or a pillow or a blanket, whatever it is that's underneath you. Let's do one more into the spiral, head leading, shoulders and arms following. And now that I've gone a little bit longer and more, my shoulder blade is on the ground so I can extend that right arm all the way out. Not that that needs to be a goal, but for me, it's more of an assessment. I notice that this is helping me because the more I've been doing it, the closer the right shoulder blade has gotten to the ground and then we come back and pause. This time we're going to pause on our backside because we're going to end up coming up to a seated position, but I would just want you to come down, relax for a moment. <clears throat> and just be in your body, be in your neck, in your throat. Just 
Just do a body scan. And then we'll be coming up. Take your time. You can roll to one side first. So this is where we're going to go back to seated, but with this seated, uh, seated movement, I'm going to give an option to use a chair. So uh, if you're staying on the floor, stay there. I will show the chair option. I'll be going off camera. Be right back to grab my chair. La, 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 la. So if you're using a chair, and you'll know in a moment because I'm going to show you the seated position, the way to sit in the chair is to sit sideways like this. This is, this is how we mimic the seated position. I'm sitting sideways, so instead of forward here, we'll be turning, let's turn both knees to the right side first. So if you're choosing to use a chair, that's the position you'll be in. Otherwise, if it's comfortable, we come to a seated position and we do our Z-sit here, so the knees will still be facing to the right. Difference is I'm, I'm on the ground, so your legs will go so that your right heel is somewhere around your left knee. Sometimes this one is accessible on the ground. If, if you find that your weight is way into the right or left hip, what you can do is take a blanket underneath the lower hip. So if you're just not able to get that left butt cheek down enough to make it comfortable, you can put slide something underneath your right hip. And sometimes that's all you need to just make it more a little bit more comfortable. All right. And then we're going to keep our left hand at our hip. Just let yourself settle into the sit bones. Watch that we're not rounding through the spine. Try to bring the heart forward. Create some space through the front body. Right hand can go to the ground. And then you're going to begin to rotate. And once again, we're going to rotate, but um, you're going to lead from the chest and the arms and the lower body first. So my head's going to follow. So I'm not turning the head and then rotating. My head is starting right chin over the sternum, it's going to stay there. The head is only moving because the torso is moving. And then as I do this, I let that left hip lift up and turn, and then I come back and just let it go. If you want to do it to your breath, you can inhale into the spiral and exhale. Sit back down. So think of leading from your spine, your chest, and your lungs, and the neck just follows along. And you're going to draw your left shoulder towards your right knee as you're coming up, so you feel that shoulder coming forward and back down. All right, this next one, we're going to take it over, and we're going to stay there. And you're going to just turn your head. Now we're going to turn just the head. Turn your head towards your right shoulder. And as you do that, squeeze your left shoulder towards your right shoulder too. So head and shoulder coming a little bit further. And then you're going to turn your head towards your back left shoulder. I'm staying here though. And then I'm going to take that shoulder back. So I'm just going back and forth. Head and shoulder in the same direction. You can do one or two of those, two, one or two more and then sit back down and relax. Fall into your sit bones. Let's do one more, but we're gonna look in the opposite direction. So you're gonna take it up, but now as you look towards the right, draw your shoulder back, so press in. So elbow's gonna go back, my gaze is going over the right shoulder. And now I'm gonna turn my head towards my left shoulder. As I turn my head towards my left shoulder, I'm gonna squeeze the left shoulder towards my chin. So they're coming together here. They're having a little argument and going away from each other here. And then they're coming together and going away from each other. And then just release, come back down. Let's do one more round, play with that however you want. You can rotate, and so now you might even lead a couple from your head. You can take the sh gaze and the shoulder in the same direction or opposite direction. So just playing with that. See what, what role your eyes are doing. So if you're leading with your eyes versus closing your eyes and then coming back down, releasing. Take both legs out in front of you. Shake them out just for a moment. We're just going to finish the other side. So take the legs out. Remember, if you're in your chair, you're sitting sideways in the chair, the knees to the left. Otherwise, the Z sit. Heel to the front of the knee. Just let yourself settle. If 
the right hip is lifted a lot and there's discomfort, remember the option of taking a blanket and putting it underneath your left hip. So just a little bit of a lift of the left hip sometimes will make the pelvis more comfortable. Right hand to your right hip, left hand to the ground and let your shoulders and your torso lead. You're gonna start to, so I'm gonna keep, think of keeping my chin right over my sternum and I'm gonna turn. It's like the neck is just staying that position and I'm just turning my torso. You can lift up on inhale if you want, rotate. That right hip's gonna lift, so internal rotation of the right hip and thigh. And then we come back down, release it. And then coming down, take this last one into your hold. And now you're gonna hold and you're gonna turn and look further towards that left shoulder, just the head moving. And as you do that, bring the right shoulder forward too. So the right shoulder is following your gaze. And then look the other way. And as you look the other way, take the right shoulder away from the chin. Chin's looking over the right shoulder. So going in the same direction, same direction forward to the left, same direction back to the right. And then you can release that. Take it down, let your pelvis sink down. We'll come into the rotation again, but this time, as you look over your left shoulder, draw your right shoulder back. So they're going in opposite directions. Feel that stretch through the right collarbone. Feel the tightening through the left side of the neck. And then look back at that right shoulder, and as you look at the right shoulder, squeeze the shoulder towards your chin. And then spread that space from chin to shoulder. Close up that space from chin to shoulder and release it back down. Last one, uh, yogi's choice. You're gonna rotate and just play with, so you might even play with just moving the head. How does that feel? Or let the right shoulder follow the gaze. Let the shoulder go in the opposite direction of the gaze, moving nice and slow. and settling back down. All right. And I'd like to give you a, a time to relax just for a moment, and I would encourage you to take the blanket, if you've got a blanket, or even the washcloth, something the washcloth can feel, I don't know, I threw mine somewhere, it feel like more than you think, even just putting that underneath the base of the skull, or the way, my favorite way to support the neck after a head practice is if I take the blanket, <laughs> and just roll it a little bit. I'm just gonna create a uh, support for underneath the arch of the neck, and then a little bit of padding under, I'm leaving enough for a little padding under the skull. If I was there with you, I'd do this for you. And then I'm taking the, that little roll right underneath the neck, and I still have a little padding underneath my head. So it's, a, it's that perfect relationship of supporting the natural curve in the neck, but a little bit of, padding underneath where the head hits. And you can keep your knees bent. You can let your legs go straight. Just take some time here. Relax and feel into your neck and shoulders. Maybe roll your shoulders around. You can go side to side or make those circles with the neck again. Relax your jaw. The other muscles that can sometimes cause discomfort even in the neck are the masseter muscles, and that is the muscle of your jaw. So when we smile, when we chew, the masseter muscles help you to chew. So even just gently moving the jaw from side to side, notice how you feel that in your neck. Just being familiar with those muscles in the neck. How does it feel now? There's different ways to work through uh, discomfort in the neck. This was definitely more of a um, active practice. The other way I sometimes do it is through myofascial release. But for now, see how, how your body responded to the active practice. It should feel good for you.
Does your head feel heavier or lighter? Can you sense all seven vertebrae in the cervical spine? And remember that it's part of the spine as a whole. It's the super highway for the central nervous system. Just opening up that space. Picture your muscles and nerves all creating space around those areas. I'll leave you here and rest for as long as you'd like. Thank you for doing this practice with me today. Peace, joy, love, and light. Namaste.